fine edition of my so-called 8-Bit Life. I'm your host, Roberto Villas. Joining me today from his compound somewhere in the world, Mr. Bill Meeks. Hello. How's it going, How are sir? you? I, I'm in Antarctica. Is, it that, is that where your, your evil lair is these days, Antarctica? It I is. Could, it I could have sworn it was in, like, somewhere Florida. I had too much of Florida. I needed to get out of that sun. So I, I did the complete opposite. As I normally do when I run into a problem, I do the complete opposite thing that's causing the problem. And, uh, you know, it always works out okay, usually. That, that's, that's what you do. That, that is, is what you do. Bill, it's, it's good to have you back on the show. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm glad that you did that because that goes through my brain every time I say that with those words. Yeah. I forgot who did that song. Cause I know that was like a super group that did it, right? Yeah. Um it's been a while since uh, I've been let's let's let, let's look let's 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 take I'm gonna take a, a cycle and it, it's been a while. Uh so, I it's stay it actually is stained. stained and it actually is from it's from it's track four from the album Break the Cycle. <laughs> Nice, nice. I actually, me and my uh, friend Jason George, my roommate Jason George in college, we would do that constantly. Like anytime anyone says it's been a while or something, it's been a while. It's, it's such a. I mean, like it's it's funny. We're talking about this in 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 the hidden pre-show, but the idea of um of uh of sort of uh songs that get stuck in your head and theme songs and and and, and weird stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, we might even talk about the pre-show. Might have been just, just just shooting the shit mode. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> I think but but gonna to be fair, to be fair, Roberto, it's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. It, it's because <laughs> it's because one, you know, you're still doing all your podcast stuff. Obviously, you're still, you know, eh. You're doing some of it, right? Eh. Really? Eh. No. Oh, okay. I we 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 hunt we hunted up uh back in May. Oh uh, shit! I thought you were still at, doing stuff. No, after after got no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we we didn't make a huge deal out of it. It it was just getting to the point like uh, you know, me and my wife Anne Marie have been doing podcasts for uh, three years. They're all still up on Universe Box. Wonderful podcast. Go listen to the whole, whole collection. But uh, we we'd been doing them about five years, and when we started, our kids were babies. You know, so oh, it, it was I, really I, easy to. I, I think I see how this is gonna go. But it, it it was really easy to put them down to bed. You know, at a relatively early time sit down do the podcast do the live stream edit it and get to bed at a reasonable hour well they're older now they're five years older than they were when we started and it just wasn't super feasible to make them go to bed at you know 7 30 at night every night when all their friends get to stay up till nine and all that sort of thing just so we could get the podcast done plus it, uh, because we were doing so many podcasts based around tv shows it was really kind of draining to especially because we prided ourselves on our quick turnaround with like 24 hours after the episode airs we have a podcast out about it and uh, so that involved multiple watch throughs and note taking and docking and then everything else involved with it and it, it, it was kind of getting draining uh, as far as doing other creative things that See, we wanted we, to we do should have so. done what you should have done is 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 pivoted and pivoted and, yeah pivoted because you're because you're, you did a lot of like you know, serious. I put that in quote content like Gotham or or mm -hmm. even something like you know. Uh, and we Gotham. always talked very serious like this all the time. Well, what I mean like serious content, I mean like, like yeah, like something that you maybe you, you wouldn't want your kid to quite watch just yet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we generally kept the shows pretty uh, PG or PG thirteen for Gotham uh, rated, but uh, I, I I mean, I would mean, you be comfortable with your kid watching Gotham right now? Um. The oldest one, who's like nine, yeah, okay. uh, probably. If I was See, with that's them, what you should have done, you should have got your kid involved. That, you mm -hmm. know, and, and and actually, that might be a, a really bit of interesting content. And it's something I've wondered, especially when it comes to a lot of the uh, sort of con. Like, if you think about like now, a lot of our even gaming content and 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 video content being drawn off this sort of old well of of things of IPs that have existed. Like in other words, like Gotham, yeah. Gotham could not just have like appeared magically. Like it would be mm -hmm. cool if something like that would have appeared now, like something new. Uh, but they tried that and they called it powers and it didn't do well. Uh, <laughs> even the comic was really good, um, but it just didn't do well. Sorry. I, I, I want mm -hmm. to do well because I love the idea of a procedural, a procedural in, in, in superhero land. That sounds interesting, intriguing, but you know, yes. Um, 
But Sorry, I can... I'm just shutting down my Dropbox because uh, someone's adding a bunch of files to the Dropbox right now. <laughs> I don't want to drop Bill, all can it. you edit this now? <laughs> Bill, <laughs> no, don't, no, don't no, leave our us. show. <laughs> no, but I'd be really curious to know what the younger generation, especially like a kid like nine, who gets introduced to Batman, mm-hmm. and, and his first introduction at Batman isn't even Batman proper. Like oh, he's he's my kid. That ship has sailed. Well, with Bat- I, I guess so. But but you know what I mean? Like where it's it's yeah. the idea of here is your f- well because okay yes you get introduced to Batman whatever but like mm-hmm. my first real like I I, I mean, obviously there is you know the I I know of the whole we're joking about Cesar Romero and 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 the mm-hmm. original you know Batman from you know Adam West era. Batman 66. Right, Batman 66, exactly. But I didn't really start watching and understanding the nuances and intriguing stuff of Batman until I would actually say the animated series. Like, even the movies mm-hmm. didn't really have as much impact as it did in everybody else. Because, you know, they just kind of... Because when the, the movie hit, you know, Tim Burton movies hit, and then the animated series hit, and that's when I started going, oh, oh, this is in, this is somewhat interesting. This is an interesting character. There's something to it. Whether it be yeah. sort of dark grittiness or the sort of even the idea of the palette. Like, there's a lot of the animated mm-hmm. series that was like that, that, you know, that theme in my head, like, dun, 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 you know, yeah. that, that. My, my introduction to the darker Batman was it was the first Burton movie. Because uh, before that, I, I knew Batman 66, and there were some animated series in the uh, 70s and 80s that I had watched because they were in syndication when I was a kid. Right. But I, I, I snuck around uh, when I was, oh, eight, seven or eight, and watched uh, the first Batman Tim Burton movie. And that just, it completely blew me away because I, ne- well, it, you know, when I watched the Batman 66 series, I, I kind of just viewed him as Batman, not like a, a joke parody of Batman or whatever. Just, you know, just a, a Batman show for kids. Right. And uh, they, then when I saw that, I was like, whoa, wow, you can do a lot of interesting things with this character if you just kind of tweak a couple knobs a little bit. Yeah, that, and that was what it was, was that was the series that kicked it off for me in my understanding. So I'd be really curious to know for a kid now, or even someone like when I was that age and I saw the animated series, just mm-hmm. what like what Gotham does to them and in, in or, or like what these sort of news, because, again, we're going to. We're coming to a point where ev- everything's new again. I mean, like we're, we're we're in a world, Bill. I don't know if you understand this. We're in a world <laughs> where the latest game is not only a remake, or not not only a a new addition in an existing IP, mm-hmm. but it's styled and geared and plays like the same edition when it first came out. Like like our newest game now is Sonic Mayhem. Or Mania. Sonic Mayhem. Sorry, sorry. It's Sonic Mania. Yeah, it's I've Sonic heard Mania. of the, I I've heard tell of this. I don't know much about. Because well, like Sonic, it basically it's 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 as if someone said, okay, well we liked Sonic back when mm-hmm. it was either Sonic Sega CD version or Sonic Three. What if yeah. we made that again, except better, and 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 somehow brought in the old? Like it's it's weird. And I watched the game. You know, I watched. Like, is is this the one that has the two Sonics, like one modern Sonic, no, and no, then there's an alternate? Okay, that's okay. Generations. This is a new, new, new one. It basically, looks. It, you, you'll look at it and say that, that looks like a, a freaking sixteen bit game. Like you'll you'll look at it and say that looks like like an old Sonic game. Um, See, but I'm it's gonna not. have to look at it. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, but it's, again, we're in that world where that's sort of the new thing. And and yes, you could argue like you could argue there's nostalgia for it and everything else, and 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 to a degree there is when it comes to like people like myself or, or people like Bill's age. But I'd really be curious what, you know, what the the, like even something like Shovel Knight, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and it being this very eight bit pixely thing and plays like an old school game, I you know, and hearing some new kids that are like really intrigued by it and liking it, I'd really be curious, especially when it comes to like all these sort of existing IPs like Batman and and Wonder Woman and all these things like how how that affects a certain gener you know the generation coming up like you know like is it is you know and especially when we you know when we think of like our era of batman and how mm-hmm. how horribly wrong that went <laughs> you know and then just died and then came back because of christopher nolan i'd really mm-hmm. be curious just like who are the you know who are the kids now that are growing up where it is like justice league will be their first introduction to somebody like like a uh, an aquaman or, yeah, because you know, obviously not gonna get Martian Manhunter yet. Um, yeah, and obviously if I, if it's Cyborg, they already know that character from Teen Titans Go. Right, so. exactly. Well, even yeah. even that is a great uh, freaking example. Like Teen Titans Go and mm-hmm. Teen Titans are are they have the same voice actors and they have a little bit of the same DNA, but 
I mean, yeah. the night begins to shine, you know, <laughs> is, is, is totally like, like that is funny and that is hilarious and, and well, it's, it's just great. I love it. But that being their introduction, like, look, it's cyborg. He's, he's a happy, you know, mm-hmm. like imagine mm-hmm. like, like it's, what's interesting. It's, it's so interesting to think of these things. So we, we watch them and we laugh at them because we kind of know that's parody and it's supposed to be. And I, and I think yeah. a lot of kids will understand that, but I just like the idea of like this younger kid that that's their introduction to it. And then as they get older, it's like someone's going to completely screw with their minds and just drop this like amazing <laughs> moment with that character. And they're just going to lose it all. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's insane. Um, people are asking me what, what's my, what's our favorite Sam Jackson movie. Um, Sam Jackson movie. Uh, hi Liz, by the way, I saw Liz in the chat room there. Yeah. Uh, my favorite Sam Jackson movie. That's it. Probably Pulp Fiction. You got to go with Pulp Fiction. You know, it's funny. In in, in hindsight, it, it's either Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction mm-hmm. is great. Actually, no. I take that back. I take that back. Okay. My favorite Sam Jackson movie. If we're gonna if we're gonna do Quentin movies and Tarantino films, I actually got to go with um, Jackie Brown. Jackie um, Brown. Jackie Brown's good. I, I may I may like like him as as as, as that. Uh, what is it? It's um. What's his character's name? Uh shit! Now I gotta look it up because it's 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 such a, it's like there there's a moment in that movie uh, in Jackie Brown specifically Jackie Brown. Uh, he's pl- he plays uh Ordell or, Robbie or, or, Ordell 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 Robbie. Oh yeah. Ordell, there's a moment in that movie, uh, and it's basically uh, uh Beaumont's last ride. I think it's a thing or Beaumont's last last scene. Uh, Beaumont's the character played by Chris uh, Chris Tucker, mm-hmm. um, and him killing him in that in that like just putting on you know strawberry letter 22 it's like one of the most pimp scenes of just him just like cold blood because then he goes to he goes to uh de niro's place uh lewis's the character and he's like who's that that's beaumont who's beaumont an employee i had to let go and it's like (laughs) it's cold it is mm-hmm. dripping cold, and then, then again, then there's a almost point. as cold as Frozone. <laughs> almost as cold as Frozone. It's it's yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah, him and freaking yeah. um, the Incredibles. He's coming out a new movie too, isn't he? Uh, Sam Jackson. I think it's with uh, what's his face, the guy that plays Deadpool. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. And it's funny because there's so many other Ryan Reynolds movies that I went to Deadpool mm-hmm. now because there's so <laughs> you know because like at one point Ryan Reynolds was known for just playing fucking joke movies and, and well movies. honestly i think i think ryan reynolds so is actually movies. deadpool deadpool from another universe who came over into our universe and became an actor for a while and then finally got back to his roots yeah it, yeah that that might that makes sense that that i can see um Def- i've been saying that since two guys a girl in a pizza place honestly <laughs> i forgot he was in that show <laughs> Wednesday night on ABC. Um, yeah. I only ever watched one episode. Bare Naked Ladies was sort of the Greek <laughs> chorus, and so I, I watched that episode. Of, of course, of course, it's, it's Bare Naked. That that's that's the reason why yes. you watched it. They're coming. Oh, did, don't they have a new album coming out pretty soon? Uh, probably. Uh, yeah, they 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 already released one this year, and then they're they're releasing another one soon. But uh, I got to meet them down in uh, Tampa. No way. There's me with Ed from BNL. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Down at the uh, Tampa Bay, Bay Margarita Festival a couple months ago. It, it was really cool. First time seeing them in like 10 years. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I'm glad you got to actually chat with them and tell you more to kind of chat with them. Uh, <laughs> if, if only there was a place where, you know, you would you would share something like that, Bill. Um, and if you made like a video for it or something or some type of edit um, type thing. If only there was what? a place we could share that. Oh, I, if only there was. Do you, do you know of anywhere? Because I, I don't know of anything. <laughs> well, I have a friend that's working on something. Um, do you? Do you? I wish I had. I wish I had. Trust this friend. I I do. I wish I had. I had, I had been smart enough. Have, have you done a background check on him? <laughs> have you Have you looked for any sort of capital crimes or felonies or anything like that? Well, I know he hasn't done anything, but he does have a an acquaintance that might mm-hmm. have done something. Well, we can't be judged for our acquaintances, especially if right. they're named Philippe Leakes. Go right, ahead. Exactly. Sorry for f- f- we can't we can't not be judged for, for <laughs> any association to anyone named Philly Bleaks. <laughs> I still love that that's that 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 it just all I had to do was just just d- sort of dance over it and I knew exactly over it, what and it's just like you knew about. exactly where to where to you know, you you saw you saw the pitch coming and you're just like I got this. Boom, Homer, right there. I, pro- I probably still have the uh, the picture I made. <laughs> oh God, the Philly Blake picture. Philly, 
Oh Phil, God, Philly Bleaks is Bleaks dot PNG. Can I share my screen on here? Uh, yeah, you can. I think you should be able to. If not, we can. We'll figure out how to get it there. Uh, if you want, just share. Uh, if, uh, if, um, if you can't, we'll 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 link me to. Ah, oh, fuck. We gotta figure out how to do this. We got it. We have to get Philly Bleaks here. So I should probably explain. Well, well, I'll let Bill. I'll cue my my local video. Let Bill sort of set up his thing to explain what the hell this gag is. Um, years ago, we're chatting in. Like some chat client, I, I think it was Google Hangouts, maybe something like that. Like we 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 had like this like giant massive sort of thing. Uh, I'm gonna reply mm -hmm. and say I'm gonna take this really quick and get this image, uh, <laughs> only because I can get this going. Um, because the problem is is that once I do this, it screws things. Up. Oh God, uh -oh. Here, here it is. I'm just gonna accept it and then open <laughs> it. There we go. I don't know how it's gonna open at all. All right, I'm gonna have to, I'll have to definitely do some some finagling. Yeah, um, but it was definitely like a one a.m. Google Hangout sort of situation. Yeah, it was it was strange in in that basically we had um I'm gonna quickly go to studio mode. Uh, we had done uh, you were talking about something and and it was it was something that you know probably wasn't necessarily and yeah my frame rate's gonna drop i apologize people you just have to deal with it for right now um, well, you, they gotta see philly bleaks yeah uh they have to um and 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 such uh, we were talking about things in somebody on the calls past that they might not have been proud of so they hunted all on a doppelganger named philly bleaks all right there it is there there there's the shot there's there's philly bleaks right there in the, in the shot it looks weird it'll look funky <laughs> I don't even care if it does. Well, Philly Bleaks is pretty <laughs> funky himself, so I mean that's okay. And so that was the the running gag that everything that uh, that you know the person uh, actually, I mean, the, the the person who had done it was never that person's fault. It was never that person who did it. It was always it Philly was Bleaks. Bleaks, and it was things that would like would make were not even things that actually really happened. Like it were <laughs> things like 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 did, did you do this? No, nah, man, that was, was was Philly that did it. Philly Philly did that that thing, you know. Yeah, I believe for a while there, uh, you know, whenever there was tragic news in the news or whatever, it was Philly Bleaks' fault or Philly Bleaks had been involved somehow. You know? Yeah, it was it was one of those those strange things <laughs> where, uh, and people are saying, do you think you should make a five uh five scream? Uh, no, five scream. They, they should have yeah. stopped scream a long time ago. I didn't know they'd made a. Four ream, uh, so four scream. Look, yeah. scream, scream. Like, I, I, actually, I take it back. I will accept a scream five on one condition. What's the condition? It gives Matthew Lillard, Lillard some more work. That's all I want is Matthew Lillard to have more work. But that's between me. No, and he's the voice of Shaggy, man. He's set. That's he's true. good. He's, he is. Um, but no. So what, what we're talking about, what we're what we're alluding to, is is Bill's mm -hmm. new project. Have you announced yes. this yet, by the it, way, or is it announcing here today? Yeah, we had we well we had kind of a soft launch a couple months ago. We've been kind of building up some content. Now we're ready to kind of go out there and start promoting it. So, so that that site is and 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 to kind of explain what the heck's going on, it is it's called the I guess it, you're you're entitling it the it's it's the sharing spot where you share, which sounds so yeah. weirdly generic, but mm -hmm. I, I guess I guess I should ask here here hold on, Lee. Yeah. Let me let me give you a line reading that'll make it sound a little less generic. Okay. The sharing spot. It's where you share. So there, there. It's yeah. a little better now. It's a little, little, little bit less. A little clearer. Little there was clearer. a little bit more it's, guidance it's, and the cadence of yeah, the... Yeah, the, there's, 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 you have, you have the, the, the valleys yeah. the export. Um, <laughs> so then I, I guess I should ask, because this is something that, you know, we talk about, and, and especially when it comes to doing web services and web things. Mm -hmm. What got you to start wanting to do something like this? Especially, well, especially you know, you know, going from making your own content to now trying to make a spot where people can share their own content. Well, it was really making my own content that sort of uh, led me down the path. Me and uh, my wife, Anne Marie, who, like I mentioned, you know, we used to do podcast. And uh, one of the things that always kind of struck us about the podcast is how eager people were to share. They, they were always looking for an outlet. And thankfully, we were an outlet they could go to to share, you know, fan fiction we we did the original universe box podcast it was really based around fan or listener submissions and uh you know so many personal stories uh songs uh short stories uh all sorts of stuff and uh, it really gave us this passion for sort of 
finding really creative people and uh, giving them a place to hang out and be creative with us. And so when we decided to put the podcast down, we were thinking, well, what should we do next? Uh, you, you know, because we're married. So, I mean, obviously we have a lot of work uh, together, raising the kids, paying the bills, all that kind of stuff. But uh, we also work really well together creatively too. Uh, that makes sense. We met in theater. So we were kind of thinking uh, what else we could do. And it really Anne Marie specifically uh, was looking for something to sort of uh, fill her days a little more because she had had a, a blog for a couple of years called Crunchy Ca Crafty and Highly Caffeinated. And while she'd had a lot of fun doing it, it hadn't kind of hit those those KPIs she was looking to hit. And, and, uh, and so, for those who don't know what KPI means, it's key performance indicators. Um, yeah. And I say that because – I didn't know what that was until I started really working a real job. When yeah. when they started talking about KPI, I was like KPI. Oh, and then someone said key, key performance index. Basically, it's it's the, the things, numbers, right? It, it's the things you measure things by. Uh, yeah. Whether that be views, whether that be uh, ad hits, whether that be retention, hours mm -hmm. worked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So it, it wasn't performing as well as she would have liked. Uh, so, you know, we started brainstorming and we went back to that old Universe Box show and all the creative people we met through that, all the people who listen to us, some of them are in the chat rooms right now, uh, talking to we, uh, Liz, and, uh, Gavin, <laughs> and, you, you know, so we, we just started thinking, what could we make to kind of feature these people and keep doing that kind of thing? And they, so we decided upon uh, what's called the sharing spot, which is basically, it's basically like Buzzfeed for creative content. Uh, it, it's basically, uh, you know, it's all user submission based. There are uh, monetary rewards and stuff we're going to be giving out, prizes, things see, like that, that. That's that's the interesting part that I see, actually, mm -hmm. is is that monetary support. Because I watched the, uh, the before the show began, you'd send me a link saying, hey, we should talk about this. I was like, yeah, we should talk yeah. about this. As I watched the, the pitch video um, mm -hmm. and that's the interesting part the monetary side not because uh, especially now and and so t to get a little bit real and and you know if, if anywhere in the internet i get real it's on my own show yeah um, because why not mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you know you have a lot of people especially we're talking about this in the pre-show but i'll talk about it now the idea of sort of people getting scared that uh, YouTube ad revenue isn't really paying out as much as it is um, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, you know, whether yeah. your content's not, you know, brand safe as they call it, uh, which mm -hmm. none of my content ever has been brand safe. So I <laughs> had to really think about this. Uh, that being said, I have a day job, so, you know, it kind of pays for it, but not that I don't yeah. want it. Anyways, but uh, two, even people that don't, you know, I like the idea of, their, of you already kind of building in the concept of how you would share revenue. It, mm -hmm. Or or even make it interesting of like you know, I, I can already see it in, in in a weird business sense, a company coming to you, let's say chocolate chip cookie company, mm -hmm. um, and they say, hey, could you you know could we do a contest where the winner gets a year's supply of chocolate chip cookies? Yeah, and, like everyone make a fun chocolate chip cookie commercial and right. yeah. and, and 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 make you know you know. The clay to as, as hashtag, you know, either hashtag ad or hashtag contest, where the fuck you need to do it so it's legal and everything else like that. And mm -hmm. the winner is like, cool, you get, you know, whoever got the most shares, the most votes, or whatever the fuck, you get the year supply of cookies. <laughs> to, I don't know if I like, I don't know if a year supply of cookies is, is the is the gift, but it's the that, idea that, that, that might not be the best example, right? But it's the idea a of a two year supply of cookies, there, however. There. Now, perfect. Now you see, I'm like, I knew you knew it too. It's, it's almost like you run this thing, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of having uh, you know a, a collective area where creatives can kind of share stuff because we're in this weird point where um, where everybody wishes to go viral. But mm -hmm. There's no benefit to it. Like, um, they were showing this on on the uh, RT podcast, uh, Rooster Teeth podcast. One yeah. of their editors, uh, Larry, had made this super funny tweet with uh, in, about Trump and some other weird things like that. Like he he parodied something, mm -hmm. whatever, and it was like super funny to the point where it got like a million and some odd like views, a billion and some odd retweets, like enough that. But he looked at the numbers and saw the views, and then saw like how many followers he got based on that uh -huh. and it's only because it's like the only KPI you really have when it comes to Twitter is, is, you know, how many people, followers, how many, yeah. people, how many people actually will engage with you. Um, and it was like dramatically like low. It was like comparatively, like it was like, there's a million mm -hmm. and only, uh, you know, 
500 followed, which I mean, 500 yeah. still has increased, but compared to how much, how much you had to kind of shoot for the moon to just get like this mm-hmm. small amount, it was like ridiculous. It was so bizarre, and and it's, you know, even the idea of like how important it is to get on the front page of Reddit really isn't that important anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the idea of having sort of this. Well, it you know this is where all of you are here. All of you are kind of working together and you all have collectively put your stuff here because you're all creatives in a very weird, funky way. Yeah. It's a big old uh, hippie commune on the internet kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, And I think that's uh, important, especially now as we start entering this era of, you know, of Patreons and and band Mm -hmm. camps and sort of these, these sites that exist that are about how to monetize your creations in a different way than ad revenue. Because yeah. Ad revenue is such a, a fickle It's thing. a nebulous thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, like, like you, like you, you've worked in, um, some sort of, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you've worked, you've worked in actual broadcast before, right? I think. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought, okay. I don't know if you right still, now. Okay. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's true. But, a couple I mean, hours like, ago. Right. Exactly. Okay. I'm making sure. Cause I never, I never know what's public and what's not public. So I'm like, eh. um, so you, I mean, you you probably hear at least you know because you think about like a a, a a typical television show, and this is from someone that you watch TV, and mm. it, it's funny because like I didn't start realizing how many commercials were back on TV until I signed up for PlayStation View. Yeah, yeah, uh, and started watching content there again, and mm-hmm. I hate it. I, I can't. <laughs> it. I, I want I want them gone. I, I I will I would. It's it's so funny how much I will pay more just to get rid of ads. And it became so apparent when I'm like, what I was watching, that I was like, I, I can't, no, this is wrong. Nope. Uh, like, like to the point where I know I'll be able to watch Mr. Robot, uh, you know, the minute it starts performing and the minute it's done and, and whatnot for, uh-huh. you know, theoretically free, if you will. Uh, but I'm going to pay for it on like Amazon again. Just to get rid of the commercials. Just, just, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's just an entirely different experience. But because of that, you know, it's such a fickle landscape. So, and, and even then, you have to sort of balance that idea of like a sponsored video versus that if you're getting a Sears creator. Um, but even the idea of just having somebody else there. And sometimes a, uh-huh. a lot of times I think the hardest part for new creators mm-hmm. is finding places that are, will, will be friendly to them. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people are like, no, it's new, you know, and, and get <laughs> angry at it and, and, and that. And, and sometimes people who are, who, who are just starting out, don't know like i still don't know where on twitch a good place for podcasts are and a good place for what mm-hmm. i do because i don't do a lot of a lot of gaming discussion content and i don't have the benefit of being a name that was somewhere else um in terms well of yeah there, there's definitely that there's definitely you know just knowledge base yep. uh limitations uh you know you don't know how to do it uh, there, there's time limitations. It takes a lot of time and energy to build your own website or build a presence on this place or that place. And, and it's just, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense if a lot of creative people are making creative things, honestly and earnestly, you know, trying to get somewhere with it, then why not bring all those people together and they'll bring all the people that they'd be reaching with their own shit and bring them over to the stuff on Sharing Spot, which, you know, is like the stuff that they're creating already. And, and it just uh, kind of creates this network in this place where everyone can grow, you know, and, and uh, that the pay structure, we've kind of structured that way too, because it, it's, uh, there's a pool of cash every month. And then, you know, whatever revenue we make from the site every month. And we put all that together and then we split it out a, a few different ways between the, our top performers. Uh, you know, we, we uh, split it up evenly and, uh, you know, so there's a defined reward and there's a, a good reason for them to bring people to the site to look at their content, because the more people looking at their content, the more potential money they could make. Right. You know? and, and, and if you do it right, you already have, um, you know, pre-rolls in your YouTube ads. And if you're not mm-hmm. doing YouTube stuff, you might have sponsorships within your podcast. Or if you're yeah. not, you at least have some sort of, of revenue stream potentially. Uh, but mm. even the idea then and, and I think that's what I like about the concept of this site. That's why I was like, wow, I'm surprised Bill's doing this in a good way, is that mm-hmm. it feels like a, a more targeted uh, BuzzFeed, or at least a more... Yeah. Because, again, I'd not say BuzzFeed is bad, but BuzzFeed mm-hmm. as a service has to sort of cater 
to the 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 common denominator it has to yeah the like, lowest this, common de- right it has to make the idea of that's why there's so many lists on there uh, mm-hmm. because you know if you ever notice on any of your social networks you start to see people share this bullshit list yeah. of like top 10 whatever the fuck because people like to read that it just that's what works i'm sorry and it sucks well, well the, the new model for content on the internet is kind of shoveling a ton of stuff out there and hoping one or two things hit right exactly and, and that that's a model that it, it, it i can't deny reality it exists but the thing is a lot of companies, I, I won't say necessarily BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed, but a lot of places like BuzzFeed are shoveling out 90% shit. You know, it's quizzicals yeah. and list and, oh, look what these full house stars are up to now and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it's, with, never, it's never any, like, it's, yeah. it's harder and harder. Like, like I have, like, it, I, I have maybe a handful of sites that I go to on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll hit a po- Politico for, my, for politics. I'll yeah. hit up The Verge for a really quick broad overview of the internet stuff. I'll hit up Ars Technica for a really quick bro- overview of like like a little bit more deeper overview. That sounds strange to say it like that way. Uh, I'll hit up Polygon for a quick overview of video game stuff. Maybe <laughs> check CNN. Uh, and then if time allows, I'll flip like on like Japan Times to see what's happening in Asia. Um, yeah. But I have like these very specific sites that I go to for that. And then when it comes to like my entertainment content, it's, you know, Rooster Teeth immediately. Mm-hmm. It's then YouTube channels like Red Letter Media and, and, and you know, things like that. Um, but it's because it's and then I'll go on Facebook and I'll see everyone else share, you know, all these like, like again, I have friends that will share like really cool articles. And a lot of those mm-hmm. friends are very select and very few and far between because everyone yeah. else is sharing the look at look what this happened or look at this or what happened at this. And it's, and it's well, that's it. That's because uh, one, it's sort of designed to get people to share it yeah. and click it and all that kind of stuff. And and two, it's a lot of what's out there right now, you know, yeah. and I, I think that I think that model, especially in 2017, is super solid. I just don't like the content it's producing. I think I, I think that's you can do the I, same I, model with quality content. That, that's where I'm at. That that's I'm, yeah. I'm I'm exactly there with you, Bill. Is that I I agree that if that model if that model is working and you're able to get your 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 views and get your ad revenue and all that stuff, keep mm-hmm. doing what you're doing. It obviously you know it's obviously working. Congratulations. Don't let me be the one to stop you because I, yeah. I don't know shit. You know, the the I always hear people, you know, certain crowds complain like, oh, why are we getting so many of these same video games? Why are we getting, you know, sequel after sequel? Why is this game exactly like the last game? And I go, uh, why aren't you playing indie games then? Because they're, you know, they're doing some some strange things, too. It's like, well, I don't like walking. Sim- well, OK, well, then fine. I guess you don't have nothing. For <laughs> you. You're just going to complain because you'll, you know, it's like I don't like DLC, but I'm going to pay money for it. It's like that's. That's why they're doing it because <laughs> they, they make money <laughs> off of it. That's why it's happening. All this stuff, you know, why it's like I don't like microtransactions, but I'll pay. I'll. I'll, I'll but someone's paying a hundred dollars for it. That's why it's happening. It's yeah, all money. Yeah. It's all. It's, it's, you. You can try and de- deny reality, or you can try to adapt to it. Right, and and that's I think what I like about the, the idea of this site. I say the idea because mm. you know it's it's new, and we'll see how it works. Um, well, there's a lot of great content up there no, right now at the sharing I'm already seeing com. kind of the stuff going down. Like I see some of your stuff there generically, but I see some some other some faces I've never heard before. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe I'll I'm, I'm probably gonna sign up for an account and maybe start figuring out ways to put my stuff on there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's actually uh, uh, funny you should ask, Roberto. It's really easy to submit your stuff. All you do is you go to the sharingspot.com and click on submissions. There's a nice Google form, both one if you want to send us a link to a YouTube video that you'd like us to publish or, you know, any other external source like a Google Doc for a short story, things like that. Or there's another form where you can just upload a video or whatever you, you want us to post uh, to the site. I'll, and we I'll, can, I'll, you can I'll, I'll, I'll you. submit some stuff because I have, some, I have some, some things that I've had that uh, have, have gotten some traction. Uh, in other places that I wouldn't mind see, you know, wouldn't mind sharing more uh, yeah. with a broader audience. That, that's a lot of the content we have up there right now, too, because they, uh, like I said, we did the old podcast uh, where a lot of people shared stuff like this, and uh, so we've been sort of leveraging that content that we already had and we had the rights to. Uh, to sort of seed the site a little bit now, we've been republishing chapter by chapter some of my books on there. And then we have a lot of uh, people contributing, like anything from a, there's like a long form 10 part essay on Lost, uh, the series Lost, uh, the cosplay tutorials, uh, all sorts of personal blogs and stories and things like that, photo- photography, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's the, the real uh, cool part, part of this is it's not just limited to video or it's not just limited because i see like on here there's a i guess from your from your wife uh a, a chocolate chip protein muffin recipe and it's just like mm-hmm. that's i i would never think of having having 
uh, almost a very generic, you know, and, and I say g- general, but it's also focused. Like it feel it feels more, I guess, genuine. Maybe genuine is the more appropriate term because it's it's yeah because it's not like you're going to publish everything that gets submitted your way. I mean, you're mm-hmm. going to try to, but you know, there's there's a certain spirit you want to have or a certain uh, yeah. I, I mean, a little they, bit of curation to it. Yeah, uh, curation, editorial uh, attention, uh, things like that. But uh, you know, uh, for for the most part, as long as you know it, it's not super filled with spelling mistakes or racist epitaphs or anything like that, we, we'll probably run it. Yeah, and even, but again, it's that I, I, idea of, and again, not because you're gating content. Like, and I, I want to stress mm-hmm. that I want to stress that in, entirely. It's not to gate things. It's not to prevent someone from not doing something. Yeah, and to be very clear, too, anything that's submitted on the site, we don't claim exclusive rights to. You're just giving it by submitting. You're giving us the right to publish it. Right. I site. think that's what's Im- so. what, what's important is, is the idea that you're sure, you know, it's it's just, you know, in in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to getting content out there um, and, and a lot of people are tr- you're trying to, you know, shoot for the moon and get the viral mm-hmm. thing when the viral before state really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Uh, what does matter and what does actually help out. And it's, it's funny. Um, I was at RTX this past uh, last month and I was actually at the uh, game attack panel game attack for this new streaming channel that kind of came out of uh, the ashes of another thing, but it's not really ashes it's long story short. Um, and their kind of mission and sort of their, their thing isn't to get subscribers. It's to get sort of this community started and, and you mm-hmm. go in there and it was, it was a community within a community, which is always fun. Um, yeah. Was, you know, there's the grander community, which I'm part of, and then kind of go in the sub community, which I'm also part of now. And going in there, it was so much fun because it was everyone there. Like they, they came out, they're like humbled by the fact that all the people were just here. They thought it was gonna be like 10 people and they go to the arcade. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the, what I'm trying to get to is that having something like this becomes a community that you can kind of integrate yourself into. It might be a mm-hmm. grander community. It may not be the thing that is, your specific content but having the idea of like you're now part of this community where a if say for example like in my line of work in my kind of content creation uh i'm always in need of guests i'm always in need of somebody to come on because yeah it's why you see friends on it's why bill's here it's why that Mm -hmm. bad way it's these people i like talk to um but i always want to i'm always striving to talk with new people and always striving to have somebody new on the show and and you know week in week out it gets kind of hard to schedule so sometimes yeah. having that community you're a part of can say hey uh i do a weird podcast where blah 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 mm-hmm. anyone up for being a guest on and then you can kind of you know float that out there and and sort of get back a yeah i'd be up for that cool well let's do this because mm-hmm. i have no problem with that and then you yeah, schedule it, accordingly and you know if we do our job with the site i for the site to be a success i think it needs to i i want to see several creator two or three or several creators from our site collaborate and do something uh like i i think i think that would i i would consider that a big success because that's really what it's all about because i mean uh, individuals you know if you're talented or you're creative and you're out there making stuff yeah you can totally go out on your own and set up your own space and do your own thing and you're probably going to make it if you're good but if if you feel like you need a little help and it's a very noisy world out there right now, there's a lot of voices and it's really hard to get yours heard. A lot of people speaking together can be much louder than one person screaming at the top of their. And lungs. I think that's important. That's that's a that's a beautiful way of saying it. I've never thought of it that way. I mean, there's there are a lot there's a lot of noise. I never thought the idea of of that's where a collaboration is. You have sort of two people going at it or three or four mm-hmm. or whatever. And and you're absolutely right in having that or even just the idea of, you know, and, and you mentioned before the idea of having sort of a knowledge base, because I'll have fr- I, I had a friend of mine, um, a musician. I was chatting with mm-hmm. her at Classic Game Fest and she just hit me up saying, hey, so I do, you know, she does a lot of podcasts like that. She's like, what should I do for, for mic equipment? You know, and she's a musician. So it's like mm-hmm. somebody who is. <laughs> who's doing things far more talented than I am. And I'm the resource for podcasts. I'm like, here you go. Yeah. Here's the info dump, the same info mm-hmm. dump. I give everybody, uh, no matter what, um, because I'll, I'll give, I have no problem giving up that information. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's so it's rewarding to hear that there's a site that has that already as a idea of 
here's a bunch of people together that are sort of doing the same thing and, mm-hmm. and that is that has no problem giving away that sort of info if need be because we all because ultimately I'm like you Bill I I, I want more cool th- you know like like the joke is whatever I I say to myself when I share something, sometimes like I, I feel like I have like a hard sell of something. So I'm just like, you really need to watch yeah. this? It's not because I want them to really watch it. It's just I want more people to watch something or download something or buy something or listen to something because the more people listen to it, it means the more cool stuff that'll happen after that. And yeah. That, it's, it's my way of, I just want cool things. I want cool new things to happen. And the only way I'm ever going to get cool new things to happen is if I, if I seed like a younger person or if I seed somebody mm-hmm. else who is far more creative than I am. Like I was, uh, you know, like if I worm tongue it into them, you know, to, to, yeah. to, part, to take a, a uh, fantasy reference just because it's just like I want that. that I like mm-hmm. the idea of having that site. I, I, I wow. It, a, a lot of people are like that, too. You know, uh, so, something that always struck me about doing uh, the podcast is just. So many people out there, you know, whether it's because they don't have enough time in their day to do it all or they they don't have the right outlet or they don't have the experience and they need to build that up, but they need feedback from people like everybody wants to be a creator. Everybody wants to make something, but a lot of people don't feel like they have an outlet. Uh, based on, you know, other limitations in their life. And I I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to give people like that an outlet that can encourage them and help them grow as artists uh, while, you know, giving them practical experience. And like you said, you know, building a great community of people doing the exact same stuff that you can collaborate with, ask advice from, all that stuff. Well, because that's that's always been the... the it's always been the illusion that an MCN provides. Mm-hmm. I say illusion because I really don't like the idea of MCNs. MCNs are multi-channel networks, things like Michelle. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are, there are, are better examples of MCNs that exist as well. Like, mm-hmm. like technically Rooster Teeth is an MCN, but they are very, 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 very selective MCN. And, yeah. And it's, you know, let's play families, somewhat of an M- MCN, but they're hyper, hyper, hyper selective like they they mm-hmm. they go and say what's going to work with what we like and who are people that we enjoy and that we want to help promote and make make bigger. Like it's like it's like this, and except in in a you know non MCN formality way, you know. And yeah. I think that's what's what I like about it is that it feels like what the illusion an MCN is supposed to give you because they always illusion like oh if you join an MCN you can you can avoid being copyright struck. It's like nope, <laughs> that's not how it works. Doesn't doesn't nope. that's that's an illusion. Well, if I join an MCN, that means I can collaborate with like nope. Nope, you're just another you're just another cog in the machine sometimes, and and that's mm-hmm. just the the way it is. You have to still be good, um, but I like yeah. That. And I I I, th- I think when we were setting this up, I I think I think that was something that was really on my mind because there's so many places out there trying to get creative people to join with them, but not for the creative person's benefit, for their own benefit. You know, it's a very self serving sort of generosity thing going on out there so i i know people are aware of that and they're wary of that so i i i knew we had to we had to give people a pretty good deal or a potential deal to you know get get them coming over and sharing stuff on the site right because again it's 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 such a like the hardest part of of that because again it's why i think i'm far more interested in this than i thought i would be until i mean i knew talking with you would be like i'm intrigued because i'm like Mm -hmm. here's what bill's thinking and then hearing you kind of talk all the things that, are, that go to my mind, like, yeah, those are the exact things that go through my mind is as a content creator, how is it that I can find the people that A, would already be predisposed to like something of my stuff, you know, because that's always the hard yeah. part is, 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 is finding, you know, it's easy to find your voice after a certain period of time. It's easy to figure mm-hmm. out what it is you tend to make and how what it is you tend to be interested in doing. It's yeah. harder to find the other people that are interested in consuming that kind of content. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's that's always a challenge is it's like i want to make because you know a lot of times you can there's uh there are pieces of content that are far more popular that may not be what you want to make and there's some that fall mm-hmm. in the trap of making that popular content and then getting burned out very quickly very fast because mm-hmm. it becomes a job uh, a, a, but a job that you hate but that you're making enough money and you can't justify not doing it um, yeah and and you know like like even some degree like uh, I, and i don't know how true but some degree like that happened a notch when it came to minecraft you just got tired 
of doing mm-hmm. of being just that's all he's known for and that's it and it's like i can't make anything new now i'm only people just ask why are you working on minecraft i you know mm-hmm. uh, or even something like even when it comes to like uh telltale like i'd love for them to go back to making a sam and max but i know it's not going to happen because they're making hand over fist and marvel games and walking dead and it's just not gonna yeah happen. as much as i mm-hmm. want it to happen as much as i want to sam and max it ain't gonna happen as much as i want mm-hmm. to make another back to future you know uh, season two it ain't gonna happen you know, <laughs> none of these things are going to happen because they're making far more money elsewhere. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's, but I like that. That's your approach. That your approach is the idea mm-hmm. of how do I make this to where it's fair to everybody? Cause obviously you still got to pay, you know, there's still server costs you have to pay. You still have to mm-hmm. pay, you know, if you developed it yourself, you still have to, you know, or you're paying someone to maintain it. People have to maintain the code. There's all these sorts yeah. of, you know, and not only that, but it's, you know, even though yes, it's a side project or, or side hustle as they always, as, as, as mm-hmm. my, my musician friends call it all the time. I, I always say that too. I, I say side I, I'm known to say that I say side hustle. I, I've gotten so used to say I, it's it's funny. I've gotten so used to being part of like a lot of like a lot of my friends in the NPC, uh, you know, are 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 hip hop artists, are, are musicians themselves, and and, and so I've gotten mm-hmm. used to saying some of the lingo now, and I realize yeah. I'm like I know what that lingo means. I understand. It's like it's like now it's like I now have the cipher to certain a certain world they didn't have years ago, and now I'm like I understand this. Oh crap, uh, you know, like there's a point when. Um, one of the guys at Rooster Teeth, Joel Heyman, he, he tweets a lot of financial stuff. And before I plan my trip to Japan, I started like you know learning about currency exchanges and stuff like that. And so because of that you get in that sort of rabbit hole of learning what the fuck a safe haven currency is, and you start learning things. And then mm-hmm. I see Joel like later on tweet about the 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 yen rate and and like you know why certain things are gonna happen to the, the diet. And I'm like, ah yes, I totally agree. And, and my brain goes, you speak Joel. I'm like. <laughs> Like it was a horror moment of like, no, I'm not supposed to understand this. This is supposed to be foreign to me. You know, I'm not supposed to know about about safe haven currencies and, and and rates and why Brexit really screwed things over. I'm not supposed to know this. I'm not supposed to know any of this. Oh crap, I know all this. <laughs> it's a moment, but um, but that being said, like again, I like, I I enjoy that. That's where you're going with it. I guess, mm. what's the, what is the overarch? So beyond having a collaboration happen. Because that's that's, uh-huh. that's the dream. That's the like, oh yes, we yeah. Want. What? Where do you see this in? Let's just say a year. Let's you know. Let's 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 be honest with internet time because internet time is mm. is, is is hyper compressed. You know, a, a month in internet time is almost uh, you know is, is a year in real time, and a year in internet time is almost a cent. You know, almost five, mm-hmm. not more. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, where do you see this in a year? Uh, where do you well, hope uh, this is in a year maybe. I I, I hope. Within a year that we have enough content coming in that we can maybe not match BuzzFeed's output, but, uh, you know, hold a candle up to it anyway. Like if we could get a piece of content being published every hour for, you know, during business hours, five days a week, I would be ecstatic. Oh, I am. Wow. Yeah, like I, I, I would like like to be putting out that much content if we could, because like I said, you know. Uh, the the Buzzfeeds of the world are out there shoveling shit, and uh, I'd like to shovel some good shit. You yeah, know, well, into that's, people's that's speech, a, you know? a very uh, in, kind of interesting way because you know people are always like and, and every uh, content on the hour, every hour, and again to to, to stress uh, about the sharing uh, the sharing spot. I was about to say sharing site, but it's a sharing spot. The site, mm-hmm. the website, the sharing spot. Uh, it's not simply just video content. It's not just simply uh, audio content. It's uh, mm-hmm. if any, but it's it, like I said, I've meant, read, read a recipe. That's typically a text-based thing or or that. Um, if we can physically find a way to host it on the website, we'll accept it. Yeah, and I think that's important. That's an important way of doing it because again, you know, because because it, it, it if especially if it's a video, it's just, it, you can do a simple embed if you need to. But there's ways of doing mm-hmm. all this stuff, and it's interesting that it's not simply that. And I think that's, I think where the strength is something like this is that it's not simply one person's voice mm-hmm. and more importantly not one person's uh thing or even one entity's thing yeah like it's like like i think the issue with buzzfeed sometimes is that you have a lot of writers but they're all kind of writing the same thing they're all roughly mm-hmm. doing the same thing it's just they're doing it yeah. in different ways and sometimes you have sometimes out of that you have really interesting things like you have the the pol- the, polit- the politics side of things where they do a really mm. good job of where they do an interesting job of that but those are so yeah. few and far between among all the other crap that you're just like well I'm not gonna follow this just so I can get that one nugget of joy I'm just gonna go to this other site that that caters to that whereas I think by having sort of a a, a hodgepodge of of awesome creative content even if it's not something you're into. 
like there'll be times on Facebook where I'll just stare at, at recipes I know I've never cooked. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, those, those, like, cause everyone, everyone does the exact same video type. Yeah, you're just like, I wonder what that would taste yeah. like. Because everyone hmm. does the exact same way of doing a recipe. On yeah. Facebook. It's always the mm-hmm. same. It's, it's, it's the solo shot. It's, uh-huh. it's the quick cuts of like, you know, ingredients, this, this, this. I think like the best one is text on like, screen, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Exactly. Like, yeah. like that. It's all, it's always this, this exact same format. Uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't change over the years. Um, and I, I you know, I like the idea of having the potential for having that kind of stuff there, mm-hmm. except it's like how, how to make butter beer or, 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 or more importantly, like, you know, you know, some, you know, Rick and Morty inspired recipe or, or, mm-hmm. or, or, or even just, just this like hyper vegan thing or whatever. And I just like the idea of, because it's this sort of microcosm of people who are creative doing yeah. creative things strangely and, and justly and understanding that, um, that no matter what comes out of it would sound interesting. And I think that's, mm-hmm. I think that's the, the kicker point beyond like a Buzzfeed is that you, you're trying to, you know, you want to have your dream is to have every, you know, things come out on the hour, every hour during business hours, you know, by five days a week. That's the dream. That's the mm-hmm. mission. That's the yeah. goal. But you don't want to just be shit. You want it to be this interesting Exactly. Content. And I and, and I think by approaching it having various creators that have their various voices and their various mm-hmm. sort of styles and what they like to do kind of do that, I think that there's 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 something there. And I think that there's some there's a, a very there's a growth vector I never thought of like having that idea of just having a bunch of creatives do a bunch of creative things, no matter what that creative thing is. But it's still curated, it's still edited, it's still kind of like Mm-hmm. Categorized, categorized. And- but even more importantly, it's it's you know because there's a little bit of editorial to it, mm-hmm. it. It's the idea of like, okay, well, what would work for here, and it's and it's you know you, it's not like top, like like for example, if I did like a top ten list of something, I wouldn't send it your way because I'm like, well, that's not that interesting. That wouldn't be that's yeah. just something that's, that's there. But if it I mean, it depends if it was a really good like satirical top ten list. Right. Sure, that'd but be if awesome. We're like, but for example, if we're a breakdown of of uh, like one of the things I might submit your way just because it's uh, like uh, I think I did like a, a, a movie review on something, um, but it was like a, it was a breakdown on a music album or like a specific song and breaking down that song for like five minutes, even though it's only like a minute song or something like that. Oh, that'd be great. Like that, that's kind of like that yeah. kind of thing is interesting, and that that thing I'm like that seems interesting. That seems fun, and I could see. You know, just looking, just again, based on on the front page, it's like there's right, there's writing, there's there's a, there's recipes, there's uh, a whole bunch of other stuff going down, and even even quick, easy, you know, quick and easy cosplay makeup tips. Even that's like, oh, that's interesting. I've never, you know, I I've, my my favorite thing that's been posted so far actually is uh, somebody uh, who was a former listener to our Legends of Gotham podcast submitted a short film he did with his friends where they. Did a they edited together several sort of short film shoots they did as different characters from Batman, and redid the uh, almost got him episode of Batman the animated series in live action, and uh, it, that's that's uh, one of one of the dreams I like if if we get another one of those like I I'm super happy it, it was just so funny and so entertaining and so kind of homespun and awesome. Well, it almost it reminds and and I think. In, in a way, and and it's and this will be the last talk because we're almost out of time. We're pretty much at the hour mark here. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a way, a, a lot of times when I see those things happen, and I can imagine for you, just because I know, I, you know, knowing how how you and I became friends, and you and I sort of all the stuff that you did, you know, with with your child and, and whatnot. I always think of the uh-huh. the the uh, in one of the podcasts we uh, we mutually listened to, Night Attack, which used to be called the Live Show, which used to be called uh, NSOW Show. They had like mm-hmm. a, a minute. Was it uh, was it a thirty second? Ten, ten, ten second, second film, film festival. festival. Yeah, you had, you had basically done one where you fired your kid, and uh-huh. and, and it's it's one of the funniest things. It's like it's right. actually up on the Sharon Spot dot com. Of course it is. Yeah, uh, it's like hit the bricks, kid. It's just like but, but daddy, why? It's like you like we've already replaced you with the new with the new baby, and it, yeah, it, it does a quick cut to him doing the whole you know uh, 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 the Bruce Bannon thing. Uh, Bruce. Uh, the, the Bruce Hulk Banner TV, walking, the walk, uh, walk down, away, walking yeah, walking away. The Incredible Hulk TV show, and it's a it's a funny moment. It's it's so hilarious because it's so it's it's vines before vines were a thing, and it's just like it's mm-hmm. so it's it's a tight piece of content because again, it, it ten seconds is a lot longer than you think it is, but it's a lot lot harder than you think it is to make really compelling yeah. funny content in ten seconds. Um, you know how long the script was for that? How long? Twenty eight pages. Of course, 
No, I'm I kidding. Thought, but the point being, but still, it, it was printed at 84 point font. <laughs> <laughs> so you could read it. Uh, but it, it, having again, because of that, I can imagine you seeing like the short film and going like, "That's how I mm-hmm. began." Oh my god, this is awesome. This is so cool. Yeah. And that's where I, that's where I come in is that you know when I t- you know when I hear people say something cool, I'm like, "I'm the last person you should ever like." I'll be honest, I'm the last person you should ever pitch something to. Because if it sounds cool, I'll say, that sounds interesting. You should make it. Even if you have no idea how to make it, you don't have the means to do mm-hmm. it or whatever. I might tell you, scale back, figure out what you can make kind of thing. You know, because sometimes yeah. you'll have a grand idea that'll then <laughs> you go, well, I can't do that, but I can do this. Uh, like, I think it's uh, it's uh, Robert Rodriguez. Uh, uh, if you ever get a chance to uh, find a copy of this DVD uh, or Blu-ray, it might be on Blu-ray already. Uh, if you find a copy of El Mariachi, uh, Rodriguez's mm-hmm. is like first film, and watch how he made like he does like this like 13 second like basically like how to make a like 500 dollars movie look like a you know multi hundred thousand dollar movie and it's it's it was simple techniques like shoot it multiple times from different angles you know yeah and then you know then you have looks then you have the illusion of this it's a two camera shot but it's not it's a single camera shot and it's like that's mm-hmm. so freaking brilliant it was such a it was such a like when i was watching the kids like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense and then your brain goes well, mm-hmm. i can do that i can do this i can do like and then that's yeah you know, that's what like that's how it all begins is that kind of thing mm-hmm. bill yes a complete pleasure to have you on as always sir if always. people want to find if people want to start actually sh- let's say people want to start submitting content your way they want it they want mm-hmm. it they've heard this idea of the sharing spot and they're like you know what i uh-huh. have an idea for this thing i think i've got something i would like to share there how 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 can they do, how can they do this all? Where can they well, go? How they have to overnight us a liter of their blood. No, I'm kidding. It's way easier than that. Uh, okay, uh, uh, so it's only only a thimble of blood. Yeah, only a thimble. Okay. Only a thimble. A thimble thimble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, just go over to the sharingspot.com and click on submissions. Uh, we do have a little explainer video there that kind of goes into what the sharing spot is, what the the breakdown, what the deal is for you. And then right below that, like I said, there's a couple forms where you can submit. You can either send us a link to a YouTube video, Google Doc, whatever, or you can upload a file uh, via Google form and we'll get it that way too. That is cool. Um, Bill, if, if you want to chat with you more, because people are asking in the chat room already, like, uh, is if if Legend of the Gotham will return, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm guessing that's a probably not unless unless I I think I think uh, I've kind of halfway committed to doing uh, like a live reaction to Gotham, Ooh. so it won't be anything big or long. It'll be me sitting down for five minutes after an episode and be like, "Hey, that was cool, right? Okay, bye." <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was cool, right? All right, take care, man. No, I mean, and it's yeah. cool. I like that, but if people if, if people do want to keep up with you, where can they find you, good sir? Uh, they, you can follow me over at at Bill Meeks and, uh, yeah, just keep an eye over there for now. Um, uh, yeah, at Bill Meeks on Twitter. I am going to be, you know, we're doing the sharing spot now and I, I am going to be starting up an animated series, uh, here in a couple months called the fakest. Uh, so you can also follow that at, at, uh, at I am the fakest and, uh, it's going to be an interesting series. Uh, if you, if you want a kind of a preview of my animation, technology i'm using to do it go take take a look at those uh, videos over on the sharing spot because i use the same stuff so that is awesome of course you can find me i'm at vincent 404 there the twitter is the internet and everywhere else in between if you want to catch previous episodes of this podcast you can go to our website cosmic radio.tv forward slash 8-bit life they find links to show notes uh the twitter account for the podcast which is at 8-bit life podcast and of course after you've done all your sharing at the sharing spot.com and you look in your pocket you're like hey look i found five cents i'd like to share with somebody <laughs> Get over to patreon.com forward slash 8 bit life. Help the show become bigger, better, and more awesomer. So that is it for today's new time. I want to talk to the people completely and utterly random. Bye, people. Mm-hmm.